Welcome back to episode number 12 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist in the description. And let's get started. This tutorial here is yet another challenge I'm giving you with first the explanation of what you need to do and then the step-by-step -step solution. Now that you have three LEDs and one push button on your circuit, let's make a slightly bigger project. Here is the result you should get for this challenge. When starting the program, all the LEDs are powered off. Then, when you click on the push button once, the first LED will be powered on and all the other will be powered off. When you click again, the second LED will be powered on and the other powered off. Then you do the same for the third LED and after that, you go back to the first LED and so on. One important thing here, you want to make a change with the LEDs only when the state of the button switches from the state not pressed to the state pressed. So if you keep your finger on the button, nothing more should happen. And when you release the button, nothing should happen either. So in your program, you will certainly have to keep the previous button state in a variable. So for example, in previous button state, okay, which will contain the GPIO input from the push button. And you will use that variable to compare the previous and the current value so you know exactly when you should toggle the LEDs. All right, and now you can press pause on the video, try to do the challenge by yourself, and then watch the solution. So I'm going to remove that. And first of all, well, we are just going to write the configuration code, okay? So the import lines, the GPIO setup, etc. So we are going to import rpi.gpio again as GPIO, import time library that we are going to use, and then as usual, gpio.set mode with gpio.bcm. Finally, GPIO dot cleanup. And now we are going to uh, create variables. Okay, one variable for each LED and push button just to uh, know the number of those components. So let's, for example, use LED one pin, which is 17, then LED two pin, 27 and LED 3 pin 22. We also have the button pin which is 26. Okay, so that is very important. Make sure you have the correct numbers. Okay, the number should be exactly the one that you have uh, used to connect the wire, okay, for each component. Now here let's do gpio.setup with LED1 pin. Let's make it gpio.out, so as an output GPIO. Okay. We do the same here for LED2 and we do the same for LED3. And then gpio setup button pin gpio dot in for the push button okay so that is the end of the configuration okay that's quite a few lines but it's just the basic stuff to set the gpios as input or output and now we can actually use the gpios so first i'm going to initialize the state of all three leds okay just to be sure so gpio output led one in uh, gpio dot low okay we want to power off all the leds so let's do that great so now it is uh, the mode is initialized and the state is also initialized so now we arrive at the core functionality of the program. So 
As I previously told you, I'm going to create a previous button date variable, okay? And I'm going to show you how we use it in the while loop. So I'm going to do GPIO input button. Okay, we need to initialize that variable uh, with a first value. So I'm going to use that previous button state variable to check the current button state with the previous button state and see when we switch from uh, GPIO low to GPIO high. So now I'm going to write while true. Okay, we are going to just do a while true like we did before. Okay, so we can continue monitoring the button state and always uh, make sure that the program is running. And first I'm going to do time.sleep 0.01. Okay, so we make that while loop run at 100 Hertz or in other words, 100 times per second. And the time slip you can add it at the end of the code or at the beginning here, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to add it at the beginning so we are sure that first we don't forget it and second it is correctly indentated. Right, so now I'm going to do what? I'm going to read the button state. GPIO input button pin. So I read the button state and now what I need to do is I need to compare the button state with the previous button state. Okay, so let's say the button state was high and now it is low. So it would be different. So I'm going to check if the button state is different from the previous button state. And as you can see here, of course, we have access to previous button state because it is in a more global scope. Okay, that's why we have declared it here. So if the current button state, which I just call button state, is different from the previous one, it means that we are either going from low to high or high to low. So either we press the button or we release the button. And the first thing I'm going to do here is actually to set previous button state to the current button state. Okay. So why do I do that? Well, simply because when the state is different, you want to, of course, update the previous state with the current state. So you don't always enter that if. Okay. You just want to check when the state is going from low to high once or high to low once. So you need to keep a variable previous button state and every time you fill it with the button state when it has changed. So let's say it was low and now here you read it is high. So you will enter that if because the condition will be true, different. And then the previous button state will be high. Okay, which means that the next time we enter the while loop, if the button state is still high, then this won't work and we don't enter that if, okay? Now, what I can do is because here we have two cases, either it's low to high or high to low. So I'm simply going to check with another if, if the button state, so the current one is GPIO high. And with that, we only check the condition from low to high. So when I enter this if here, this block of code, I know that the button has just been pressed. And this structure here with the previous state and checking the previous and the current state is actually quite common Okay, in robotics or when you want to deal with hardware stuff. It's good that you see that now because you will encounter that many times in the future. Okay, so now that we know that here we want to toggle the LEDs, uh, now we have to focus on the LEDs. So actually we need to kind of have a keep a state, okay, for all the LEDs because we need to know when we should switch to LED 1 or LED 2 or LED 3. What I'm going to do is add here index, let's say LED index 0. 
let's put it to zero. And we are going to say that if the LED index is zero, okay, then we are going to power, I'm just putting some comments now, power on LED one, okay, and set the LED index to one. Okay, and then I have L if LED index equals one. So make sure you have the double equal. Okay, when you assign a variable, just one equal. When you test a variable, two equal. Then uh, power on LED two. LED index is equal to two. And else we're going to power on LED three and say that the LED index is going back to zero. Okay, so what did I do here? Well, this is basically a simple state machine. Okay, we start with a state which is zero. Okay, just to represent the index of LEDs, let's say zero, one, and two. And when it is zero, so we enter that while. When it is zero, then we are going to power on the LED one and set the LED index to one. Okay, so then if this is true, the elif and the else will not be executed, all right? So after we have powered on the LED one, we go back here, we go back to the while loop, okay? And once the user has pressed the button again, then we enter that if again, and no LED index is one. So we are not going to execute that block of code. We are going to execute that block of code, okay? And power on LED two and then set the LED index to two. So next time we press the button, we go inside the if again, and LED index is not zero, it's not one, so we go to the else, and it is where we can power on LED three, and of course set the LED index to zero, so next time we go back to the first condition, all right? So to power on the LED one, it's simple, I'm going to do GPIO output LED one pin GPIO dot I. And of course, what I also need to do is to power off the other LED, okay? Because if I don't ask to power off the other LED, if they were powered on, then they will not be powered off just by themselves, okay? GPIO low. And let's also do that for LED 3. Okay, and now to power on LED 2, it's the same. So I'm just going to and paste that. But instead of, here I'm going to put low and here I'm going to put high. And the same for LED 3. I'm going to put low here and high here. Okay, so you can see the first time we have high, low, low, and then low, high, low, and then low, low, high, and then going back to high, low, low, etc. Well, it seems that the code is finished. Let's try that. Let's see if we have any error, okay, because I haven't checked uh, for errors yet. So let's run the code. Let's name it. Activity six. So as you can see, first all of the LEDs are powered off. Now I'm going to press on the button once, and as you can see, the first LED is powered on. If I press again, the second LED is powered on. I press the third, and I press again, going back to the first one. If I keep pressing the button without releasing the button, then nothing changes okay right and when i release the button also nothing changes it's only when i actually press the button so when the button state is going from low to high that we are changing the power on led all right that's the end of this episode if you found it useful you will definitely like my full complete course on raspberry pi named raspberry pi for beginners this course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.